Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Ali Manning. This is Vintage Page Designs, and um, welcome. Around here, we talk about uh, handmade books, handmade journals, handmade sketchbooks, and today I'm very excited to talk about. I feel like this is like my number one book binding supply. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know, you already know that I love craft text, which is what we're going to be talking about today. But this is for the benefit of folks who are brand new to it, or you may have been using it for a while and you may have some questions. So if you are joining us live, welcome. I will, I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end. But first, I have um, the top sort of 10 questions about craft text that I get most often. So I'm just going to jump right in before I do. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Linda. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Bonnie. It's nice to see you. Okay. The number one question I get is, well, what the heck is craft text? Because I talk about it all the time, and I thought it might be kind of useful to have a definition and to actually show you what it is. But before I show you what it is and give you a definition, um, I want to tell you how I, um, how I found craft text. So... This is the very first book that I made with Craftex. I was approached by Cloth Paper Scissors in, I want to say 2017. I'm going to make myself sound very old now. I think it was 2017. Um, by the publisher who said, oh, we'd love you to write an article for us. Sadly, Cloth Paper Scissors is no more. I bet you there are plenty of fans out there. And they said, would you like to um, create a book using this new material called craft text we've just come across it so they very kindly sent me some samples to play with and um, i wrote my article all about um, creating this book hold it up it's got some eco printing on the front it has some hand dyed pages a long stitch and then um you can kind of see the back there so that is how i came across craft text by someone else introducing it to me so hopefully i can do the same thing for you the, the definition, sort of the dictionary definition of craft text is that it is a durable and versatile paper-like material. Um, and it's often used as an alternative to leather or fabric. Now, when it's made, it's made of a combination of natural fibers, um, but they're produced in such a way that they're non-woven. So it gives it a very unique texture and very unique um, strength. Like it's a very strong material. It's tear resistant. It's water resistant. You could even throw it in the washing machine and iron it. So also heat resistant. So it is pretty darn amazing. It comes in a variety of colors, which I will show you in a minute. It can be embroidered, painted, manipulated in a bajillion different ways. And um, it's used for, I mean, we use it for making books, but most commonly it's used for bags, wallets, home decor, and clothing even. So it is, um, it's like a wonder drug, but for bookmakers or crafters. So let me show you how you can purchase it. Oh, I've just got, I, it's like a craft ex extravaganza here. Like what you can't see, Beyond this, beyond the camera, is just like piles of piles of books and paints and craft it. So you're going to probably start out by buying it in a pack like this. Comes in packs of eight and a half by eleven. Generally, um, six sheets. Or sometimes I think they have eight sheets. But it comes in packs like this. You can also buy it in a roll like this. And let me tell you how much is on a roll. 1.5 yards, so and it's um, 19 inches wide, one and a half yards. So you can buy it on a roll. And then once you get a little obsessed, which I might be, you can actually buy a bolt. I just bought myself a new bolt of white craft text. Sorry about it. There's 10 yards on here, and it's, again, 19 inches. So there are the three ways that you can buy craft text. There are two types of craft text. There's a washed and an unwashed, and I will get into those differences in a minute, but let me just show you the different colors that you can purchase. There is a neutral range. So here are the neutral colors. Hold them up so you can see them. I will flip my camera down shortly um, to show you a bunch of samples. So within the neutrals range, you get a white, you get a black, oops, black, you get a tan color, a dark brown, you get this gray color, and then actually maybe that's more like tan. Maybe that's a stone. I think that's stone. 
I would call that a tan color. There's some really nice neutral colors. So you can tell that's what I um, started out with when I created this little um, field notes book, this um, sort of tan color or whatever color we decided it was gonna be called. So there's the neutral range, which I love. So if that's your aesthetic, but you can also get bright colors. So here's just a few of the bright, bright colors that you can get in craft text. I'm not entirely sure how many colors there are um, because they keep adding colors. And in fact, um, I have on sort of pre-order the range of new colors, which are like jewel tone colors, which are really yummy. So, but most of them are fairly bright, um, which you can see here. You can also see um, in this pack here, here's some more of the colors, like a turquoise, green, blue, orchid, etc. So lovely, lovely, bright, bright colors. Um, but what I like to do is to, like I say, buy a bowl of the white or a roll of the white, and then you can do different surface design on it, which we will get to in a minute, I promise. And the next question I often get is where the heck can I buy this craft text? So you can go direct to the manufacturer, which is CNT Publishing. Um, and I'll be sharing their um, website with you a little bit later on towards the end. So it's called C and T Publishing. So you can buy the whole range of products there if you're in the US. And um, the good thing is they have the whole range of products. The bad thing is, you know, shipping can take like a good week, maybe a little bit longer, but you can also buy an Amazon. However, on Amazon, there's less choice and, um, but it's quicker shipping. So it, you know, you weigh it up. You can also buy in some um, online uh, art supply stores, like a work of heart in California. Did used to sell packs of this? I don't know if she still does, but you can also buy it in art supply stores as well. Um, as far as I know, most people do get it from Amazon, but if I have that wrong, please let me know in the chat. If you have another really good source, I would love to know. Just take a drink. Okay. So that is where you purchase it from. And I will say it's not inexpensive. It is fairly expensive. Um, so just start out with a little starter pack like this, see how you like it, and then um, as you buy la if you buy a roll or you do buy bolt, it becomes more cost effective. But just start out with one of these to see if you like it. Although, what's not to love? Um, the next question that I get asked all the time is, what is the difference between washed and unwashed Craftex? So, let me actually I can let me just show you in the camera if I can. Let me just put a light on so we have a little bit of brightness here. Um, Washed craft text, can you see, has this texture to it. So it literally has been washed, whereas unwashed is nice and smooth. So, uh, no, that's washed. Where's my smooth? Where's my smooth? I think this is smooth. I'll have to open it. This roll is just a smooth craft text. So it's completely, well, smooth. Um, it's unwashed. It's flat. So there's the two different kinds. So let's say just by um, chance you bought the unwashed and you actually wanted the washed, you can just wash it yourself. What I will say is the washed has lots of sort of almost like fine wrinkles, fine texture to it. Um, if you want like a more rumpled texture like that, um, I wash this myself and then just spritzed it with water, screwed it up in my hand like this that and then opened it out and it started out smooth but it wound up like that with a really nice kind of almost like paper bag texture to it so um, if you would like a larger sort of washed effect you may want to get smooth and do it yourself because the pre-washed is fairly um, well, it's just fairly textured as you can see the big difference though if you are making a book with the washed and the unwashed is, the next question, does it have a grain? So once you wash Craftex, or if you purchased pre-washed Craftex, it, um, it does not have a grain. However, if you have the smooth unwashed, it does have a grain. So that is something to keep in mind when you're creating books. I mean, it's not a big deal, and it's easy to figure out the grain. In a minute, when I flip the camera over, I will show you um, 
And if I forget, perhaps you can remind me. I'll show you how easy it is. You just bend it. And if you're going against the grain, you get cracking, just like you would with a piece of watercolor paper. So the thing to remember, unwashed equals smooth equals grain and washed equals texture and no grain. Another question I get a lot is, can you tear craft text? No, <laughs> you literally cannot tear it. I couldn't tear this if I wanted to. I would have to use a knife or a pair of scissors or rotary cutter. It's, it's pretty much indestructible. Okay? It's, you just can't tear it. It's uh, amazing. And you may also be wondering, am I getting anything on my hands? Nope, none of the color comes out. It's completely color fast. It may not be color fast when you add some different um, paints or dyes or things to it, which we'll talk about a little bit, a uh, little bit. But um, as it is, completely color fast, clean hands. Um, another question I get asked all the time is, can you glue it? Personally, um, I mostly sew craft text, but you can glue it. And I think now would be a really good time for me to flip down and show you. Um, where I have glued and where I have not glued. So just give me one moment to make sure that you can see everything. Like I say, it's like a craft text extravaganza here. It's like, you can't even imagine how much <laughs> craft text there is in my studio. So the question is, can you glue craft text? Yes, you can. You're going to want to use, um, if you're gluing two pieces of craft text together, you're going to use PVA. And you're going to have to um, place it under some heavy weights to um, make sure, while it dries, to make sure it adheres. But for, if you are making something structural, like a book or even a piece like a bag, you wouldn't rely on glue to hold something together structurally like two pieces of craft text together, say for a handle or a closure, it just wouldn't, PVA would not be strong enough, you would wanna sew it. But if you want to sew, uh, stick on a small piece of craft text to um, itself, like another two piece of craft text together, that's perfectly fine, and it also takes paper. So let me just switch this around. I have to remember which way around this goes. I have to be in the corner, remember, so that I don't lose sound. Let's scooch across. So for example, um, this is my little thing of samples, by the way. This is awfully yellow here. So here's uh, a book made from craft text. Now I'm gonna show you a ton of different examples of books that I have made. But here, for example, I have a little uh, closure where I used um, two eyelets and I wanted to hide the inside. So I glued on a tiny bit of craft text to the craft text cover to cover it over. That's the kind of size pieces that I would glue together. And this has got nothing to do with the actual structure of the book, if that makes sense. Um, if you wanna glue paper to craft text, you can use matte medium or PVA and it, it goes on beautifully. You can also add washi tape I would just secure it with a little bit of glue stick if I were you, or a little bit of PVA. So you definitely can glue things to craft X. Another question I get all the time is, can you sew it? I think probably by now you get the sense that you can sew craft X. Um, I have tons of different um, samples of books to show you that I've created. I mean, literally dozens. I would say, let me show you this one and this one as an example. This is this cute little one I did for a, a young friend of mine. She's like 10, she comes to do crafts with me. So this is for her, it's a cute little book with a bow stitch. So this is hand sewn. So I've hand sewn a ton of books as you probably know using craft text. Um, and these were sewn by hand. I used a regular awl to punch the holes. You don't need a Japanese screw punch. You can just use a regular awl that you would use for um, book binding. So that's a plus. And, um, you know, I think these holes are about a 16th of an inch or something. They're not super big. So you can definitely hand sew. Um, but I also really like to machine sew. Oh, you cannot see that at all. I'm so sorry. Right, let's try this book. It's completely blown out. We have like, I think my light's too bright. Let's turn down the light a little bit. How much light does one person need? 
Okay, let's try that. Let's try inside this book. Yeah, you can see the machine stitching right there. So it takes machine stitching really well. And unlike paper, you don't have to do a small stitch. I mean, um, you can do a small stitch. If you're stitching paper with a sewing machine, you want a long stitch, otherwise it perforates. But with craft text, you can use a tiny, tiny stitch, which I did there. Now this, this honestly, look at this. This was a scrap that was left over from goodness knows what, probably my original project. It's a pamphlet stitch book. If you flip it over, it's just covered with scraps of fabric. Sorry, this is so bright, my goodness. Um, it's just scraps of, I don't even know what, lace, paper, ribbon, who knows? If that's an old blouse of mine, that's ribbon. You name it, I put it on there. And I did the same with this book. This is the um, lattice binding from the Hammy Book Club. This is the March book, or is it April? April, April. Um, and this is a craft text cover, and I just sewed. Hopefully, maybe you can see the, the sewing there. Probably not with this bright light, but you can see it on the outside. It's the same concept, just lots of strips sewn on there. So the answer to that question is yes, you absolutely can sew craft text, and you absolutely should, because it's great fun. Now, next question, can you paint or dye? Oh, yes, you can. I have a ton of examples to show you of things that I have done and other people have done. This little book right here was white, craft text, unwashed. So I had to make sure I had the grain going the right way. And um, this was just basic acrylic paint from Liquitex. I think I did two layers and I um, sort of did it with some rough brush strokes. Then I splattered some water on it too. So it gave this kind of um, beaded effect. And then this right here is black pen. Don't ask me what black pen, I can't remember. Probably a Sharpie or just, you know, a favorite black pen. Along here with a little white um, gel pen. In terms of when you are using pens and paints or anything like that, um, you want to check the manufacturer's so website or directions it came with. If it's not water soluble when it's dried on paper or something else, it won't be on craft text. So this is acrylic paint, so it is. I used, I think I used a sharpie here, so it is, um, you know, waterproof. But if you want to use something that you think is um, impermanent, which will smudge with water, you can just spray it with Krylon spray. Do a couple thin coats of Krylon spray to make it waterproof. So yes, you can use paint. Like I mentioned earlier, I have this little pile of um, samples, which I did oh, donkeys years ago, of different paints, just to, you know, uh, samples to prove to myself what, what can it take. It can take Posca pens really nicely. So just shake up your Posca pen and go in and it's lovely and bold. And that's just one little layer. It also takes gelatos, which I know isn't a paint, but this is completely dry. See, nothing's coming off. That's orange from earlier. It takes gelatos for heaven's sake. It's Posca's again. Um, what else, what other paints can it take? Let me just get rid of that. It can take um, watercolors. So here's a couple examples of watercolors that I did. This was a liquid watercolor from like one of those droppers. Again, that's a liquid watercolor. Look how rich that is on these different colors. Um, this was a um, pan watercolor and that was from a tube. This is from a tube. So it definitely, I mean, look how vibrant and gorgeous those watercolors are. They're probably Daniel Smith, but and so it definitely takes watercolor um, and also takes watercolor pencil too. So, I mean, you name it. It takes it. Let me show you some examples. This is um, my one of my favorites is to use Karen Dash um, gouache. You may have seen me use this. Know how filthy it is! Um, Karen Dash gouache. It goes on really nicely on the smooth craft text. See here, these two books. This is the um, chain link book. There's a link below to um, how these two little books were created. So I did a layer of the gouache um, or several layers of the gouache. And then this is 
This is um, a stencil, and this is a stencil done with acrylic paint, just with a white sponge and very dry acrylic paint. And then I went around it with a pen here, and then I did a little pen work right here with stencils. Um, what other ones? And then here's another one, which I know many of you are very familiar with. Um, this is also done with gouache, I believe, and then it had some Zentangle on. I know lots of you have seen this book before. So it takes paint beautifully. How about dyes? Yep, it takes dyes. Here's a book. I didn't use, I didn't dye the whole thing, but I had some dye just left over in a pot and I painted on this sort of tan washed craft text with some blue paint and this was coffee. Kind of splattered. So it takes dye really nicely. What else? Let me look through my, my pile. Oh, another thing that takes really nicely is the ink tents, ink blocks. Really, I mean, here's one I did earlier and it's nice and dry. You can tell if you just go in, whether you've got the blocks or the pens and it, it comes out really, really, the color is really rich and delicious. So you can definitely use those too. So pretty much, I'm not entirely sure what you can't use on here. Um, let me show you some other quick examples of rubber stamping you can do. So this was a hand carved stamp, kind of like this, hand, obviously not the same one, hand carved stamp, which I then uh, watercolored. I did uh, waterproof ink. And then here is, um, some craft text that Diane Hicks sent me. She is a fabulous artist. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> um, this was, I believe, white. She painted it green with acrylic paints. And then she did some sort of uh, sponging with some iridescent paints. And then she stamped with white acrylic paint and her hand carved stamps. And she sent me this as a gift. So of course, you know, I haven't used it because I'm hoarding it. Like, you would we'll, we'll hoard um so yes i will use it one day this right here distress oxide spray i don't know if this is waterproof or not i suspect i might need to seal that that's one la layer of this oxide spray and um yeah, honestly the world's your oyster i think you get the idea you can pretty much do anything another um i'm, sure I'm looking through my samples is another um, couple of stitched samples for you. Well, this is this has been stitched, but this is also um, collage. You can definitely collage on top of your um, your book as well. So it's just a this is glued on. I'm not sure what I glued it on with. I think probably this is quite a fairly thick um, tag, so I suspect I use a double stick tape to glue that down. Let me um, quickly show you the grain difference, if I can. Let's find a piece of, here we go. As I promised, oh here, yeah, I've got a smaller piece. This right here is unwashed. That's, oh, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, but. Can you see that? Oh yes, yeah. so this is with the grain. It folds nicely. If I go against the grain, so if you can see how that cracks, it's really, it's really obvious, even if it isn't on the camera, that's against the grain. Like you'd have trouble getting a book to close and lie flat. You could score it for sure, um, but it's, you, you'll even feel it. It just doesn't feel right when you go against the grain. What was the other thing I was gonna show you? Oh yes, um, embossing. If you have one of, I'll make some space here. If you have one of um, a Sizzix, which I know many of us do from back in the day, I swear this is 15 years old. Um, the Sizzix machine is ancient, but it still works, so I'm still gonna use it. So you can run um, craft text through your embossing machine. So I ran it through with a um, Tim Holtz die earlier and did these brown leaves. It's really cute, they're nice and crisp and can be sewn or glued onto a project. 
So you definitely use that. You, let's try embossing something, shall we? Let's grab one of those pieces we had earlier. So this is where we're gonna like not be able to find anything because of the craft text frenzy. Let's try and emboss something. Let's try and emboss this piece of white. It's got some pink on it, but still. So where's my tray? Here we go. Let me know in the comments if you still, if you have one of these Sizzix machines. I think they're fantastic. So I think I open it up to tab two. You put in one of these trays. You search for the piece of craft text. It's one of these um, embossing folders. Do you remember those back in the day? Love these. And then put it on there. You can run it through. Oops, except oh, my handle's on the wrong side. Let's twist it around. Okay. Through you come. I'm very curious to look in the comments in a second. I've got to stand up to see if anyone still has one of these machines. Apparently, you can get them electric now, which is fabulous because apparently I'm struggling to turn the handle. There we go. There we are. That was a workout for my arms. Let's see how that came out. Oh, come on. Can you see that? Maybe. How cute is that? Oh, I love that. And I can see like rubbing some ink over the top of that. Let's try one in black. I feel like black would be a really good color to do this. Oh, shall I do black? I don't know, shall I do a different one? I just don't know. Okay, stand up again. Yeah, I'm, fe I'm feeling like the electric ones would be fantastic right about, right about this point. Here we are. Ooh, yes. I wonder if you can see that. Might be hard for you to see the texture. Well, you know what I can do? I can rub it with some ink so that you can see it. So if I went in with, say, a little um, ink like this, would that pick up the texture? Yes, I think it would. Hopefully you can see that a bit better now, that kind of raised texture. Let's get the light back. That's pretty delicious, actually. I can oh, I can see that. And there's the back that's debossed, but I really like the front that's embossed. Wish you could feel it. it feels yum. And then you know maybe you want to um, you know use a die cut as well. Cut out different shapes. This is one of my favourites. It's like this kind of. Well, I don't know what you would call that. But it's a very cute shape. Let me show you. Okay, and I think I've got one more quick question that has come in, and then I will answer your questions. Let's just do a quick die cut. I'm like, I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood now to play. So we need these. Let's use one of these. We do blue. Why not? Let's do blue. Let's do a delicious. All right, let's just get these lined up. There we are. I've got a couple more samples to show you as well. Books I think you'll like. Oh, look at that. That's a really nice shape and it's got like stitching around the edge. So I can see that would be really nice on like a book front. Fold into a little book. So yeah, fun, fun, fun. Lots of things you can do with your old die cut machine. Um, let me just show you a couple other samples. I've made traveler's journals with them. These so are where you can, where you have elastic and you can remove little notebooks. So you make traveler's journals. Anything that you can do with leather, any, any sort of project you want to make with leather can be used with craft text. Um, any others? Right here, I did a sewn boards book. And I use craft text as a spine. So you see that? It's like it's almost like used as book cloth. 
used as a spine. That's called Sewn Boards. That is in the book club. And then um, I promised a sneak peek of the um, five day challenge books. Um, I made some in leather, but I'm not gonna show you those. I'm gonna show you the ones I created in craft text. So I used, here are the three books. I used, um, oops, here we go. Washed craft text in brown. It's a little chain stitch book with a little loop, little button closure a long stitch book, I happen to do that one in black, and then a running stitch book. So those are also made from craft text. Final question, and then I promise I'll get onto your questions. Let's scooch back across. I'm trying to clear my way through all of the craft text. The last question is, um, what in heaven's name can you make with craft text? So um, lots of things, books, obviously. That's all I can think of is books. But what I want to share with you is that you can, um, if you look on, let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, share screen. Here we go. Um, if you look on CNT Publishing's uh, website, so it's ctpub.com. If you go to free projects and then scroll down to craft text, there is a ton of free projects there that you can try, including wallets, baby shoes, a tech stand, necklace. There's three pages worth of free projects. Um, a little banner, a wine holder. Now you're talking. Um, napkin ring. So lots of really fun projects. So um, those are available on their website too. So, um, and like I said, they're completely free. So um, that is another um, if you are not into making books, although why wouldn't you be? Um, you can do that. So I think I'm done talking for a little minute. Um, are there any other questions that you would like me to answer about craft text? I would be happy to. Or you think there's anything I missed that you, um, you know, that we that we want to share? So I have Amber here helping me. So she's going to feed me questions or comments if there are any. <laughs> not many. Good. Can you put ink directly on the embossing folders? Um, I have not done that, but I've heard that people do it. Um, Barbara, great question. I've heard people years ago, I haven't recently, but yeah, they used to swipe dye ink, right? Inside, I'm not sure which side, whether they did it the embossing or debossing side. So I've heard of that, I haven't done it. But if you try it, please let me know, because it, it sounds fun. Rather than swiping the ink on top, it kind of, does it within the embossing folder. So let me know. Could you make a hard cover using craft text? That's a really good question, Marie. Probably not. I feel like, so I think what Marie is asking is, could you wrap book board? You could use the spine. You could use a soft spine like I did here. So you could definitely, um, a soft spine but if you wanted boards here like a thick book board I wouldn't I think craft text is too thick to wrap around book board and to glue it successfully personally so I would say probably not but you could do the spine and then like with this this is um like file folder stock I think inside here several layers of file folder stock and not traditional hardcover but if anyone has done it, let me know. So Teresa says, I love the little set of books you did a few years ago for the Bookmaker Collective. I have a hunch you are limited in sharing that exact class, but can you do a variation of this for this class? Yes, this, is, this, is, this little set of uh, books for the challenge is pretty similar to what I did for the Bookmaker Collective. I mean, did we do, I think we did the chain stitch. The other two we didn't do. Um, gosh, I can't remember now. It's a few years ago, but they are pretty similar. Um, so thank you, Teresa. Yeah, um, it's not that I'm limited. Um, it's just I did it as a live class and I, I can't. It was just done on Zoom and sharing a Zoom class is kind of tricky. So um, but yes, that is pretty similar. That was what was going through my mind. Anything else? They now have, Bob says they now have 3D embossing folders that work well with putting in on either side. Very impressive. Something else for me to go by? No, I won't. Yes, I, will. I might. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I have to check those out. No, is that it? Excellent. 
All right. I don't think there's any, is there anything else I need to share with you? I don't think so. I feel like I've shared my brains out where it comes to craft text. Um, you may be able to tell that I like craft text. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up because then that will let me know what you are liking and I can do more of that. And if you haven't already subscribed, please um, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. We will not be here next week um, live on Thursday because we have a team retreat, but I will be back very soon. And um, for those of you who join me live or who watch the recording, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And um, go play with some craft techs. It's the best. You'll have great fun. I will catch you all soon. Take care.